license plate readers on your Cape Cod escape, to security cameras on homes, to the constant eyes of cameras in public places. We are living in a state of surveillance. We are being watched, all of us, almost everywhere. The images range from the mundane to heroic acts, criminals caught red-handed, and the disgusting doorbell licking anyone? The average adult will be captured on camera more than a dozen times a day. If you live in a city, that number jumps to a whopping 50. I guess it's, it's not ideal, but um, it's kind of to be expected at this point. Uh, it's not as shocking as I guess I would hope it would be. And the hotly debated facial recognition is reaching further into our identity than ever before. Companies are using it to reveal everything from your age, even your emotion. I guess it's, it's kind of creepy. Like I said, I guess it kind of been heading that way for a while, but it's a little, uh, little weird to think about. Cameras can now zoom in from anywhere to identify you. Software takes your image from a crowd, creates a face print, and automatically searches databases to find a match. Your face replacing a boarding pass at Logan. More than 50% of Americans are in a database available to law enforcement, and at least a quarter of police departments in the U.S. have used it to help solve a crime. As long as it's after they commit the crime and it's not like Minority Report where they're using pattern, you know, facial recognition pattern to catch an innocent person who hasn't done anything yet. I think it's important that we get out in front of this. One thing I hear a lot is that the technology is so far ahead of where the legal system is. And in some ways, many of us are already in front of it every day, voluntarily, using facial recognition to unlock our phones. Apple even now allowing you to set up an alternative identity, a convenience Yes, but Orwellian concerns loom. Even if we ignore the fears of a dystopian view, research by MIT grad student Joy Bellowani discovered what she calls the coded gaze. Facial recognition relies on algorithms that have proved highly accurate when identifying Caucasian males, but fall short when it comes to dark-skinned females. If this technology worked perfectly, this would still be a massive invasion of privacy. This would still be handing over to the government the ability to track, in real time, the location and behavior of every single person. Under the watchful eye of four cameras in just one block, we spoke with Somerville City Councilor Ben Campanuin about the city's ordinance now banning police from using the technology. The only other city to do this, tech savvy, San Francisco. This is a technology that I like to think about as requiring everyone who lives in Somerville or who visits Somerville to basically wear an identification badge on their chest every time they're out in public. A view that some feel could save lives. Paul Fitzgerald was a superintendent overseeing intelligence during the Boston bombing. They tried to use facial recognition to identify the suspects, but it wasn't as advanced as the 3D tools available today. Who would not want, if we had the capability to identify those two individuals early on in the week, now we know who we have their identifications, we can go get them before they plan, as they were, planning secondary attacks. Now in private security, Fitzgerald is a supporter of regulations, but cautions an all-out ban would be harmful. Every community deserves and should expect the police to be utilizing every tool at our disposal within legal limits to keep them safe. It's frustrating because the police have the best interests uh, in mind when they're going to utilize these technologies. And we see you know, the proliferation of it being used in private sector, and people don't get concerned. And I've raised that question to friends, and, and they say because the police can put handcuffs on you. Gabe Tenenbaum, a law professor at Suffolk University and former law enforcement agent, says facial recognition isn't necessarily unmasking our privacy. There are valid law enforcement purposes for facial surveillance technology. So if we had the ability to easily and effectively identify criminals who otherwise would get away by looking at pictures from public cameras on the streets, that would be remarkably valuable. But there are downsides to it, too. Historically, when the police have had a need to search someone or search their papers or search their property, they've had a process to do that, and that's to go to a judge. 
For now, we're in the Wild West. While this supercharged surveillance expands its reach eyeing the public, governments, including Massachusetts, begin to try to regulate an algorithm that isn't slowing down. Let's just pause for a second and figure out where we want to draw the line. I wouldn't say that we shouldn't use these technologies. I would just say that we should stop and ask, uh, ask the question first about how we should use them. Now, both Oakland and San Francisco, California, as well as Somerville, have all banned facial recognition by government agencies. And Cambridge and Brookline could be next. They're considering it there. And at the state level, at the state house, lawmakers are actually considering a moratorium on using this kind of technology until we pass some laws with very specific guidelines as to how we're going to use that information and how it's going to be shared. It's all so tricky and complicated. All right. Well, there are many reasons to get home surveillance. This man has heard them all.